Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. Look us up on Roku. <laughs> on Roku. We're in the sports section, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. <clears throat> you know, I believe it's more important to get it right than to look good. I'm going to retract an earlier prediction that I made. I do feel that George Groves is a very live underdog against Carl Frotch. And if Groves fights his best fight, regardless of what Carl Frotch does, I think George Groves beats Carl Frotch. I like the underdog in that one. But I won't be betting on the play. I'm going to be on the sidelines. In the last few days, <clears throat> a few people have contacted me, have left comments to my videos, and I read those comments, where they've said that George Groves has split with his trainer, Adam Booth. Now, at first, I thought the first couple of people who left this message were way off, right? How could George Groves, I thought, possibly be this deluded? But, of course, I've gotten so many of the messages, and after doing some Google searches here online, and after looking at great sources, I realized that it's true. Apparently, George Groves, on the eve of the biggest fight of his life against a world champion, a difficult world champion with a great chin, who has gone the distance against world-class competition, George Groves, curiously, has decided to split ways with really one of the master tacticians in the sport. Now, I know there are elite fighters. Miguel Cotto, Floyd Mayweather, who seems to toggle between Floyd Sr. and Roger Mayweather, who have switched trainers and have had success. I'll concede that point early on. But George Groves is a guy who, in fights I have watched, has given away some of his talent, right? Like Sugar Ray Leonard in the first Duran fight, there are fights where George Groves, who can move, suddenly gives up the movement, the Sierra fight. That's exhibit number one. He's given up the movement and has decided to slug it out with sluggers. Right? Let me just say, that's not the way to beat Carl Frotch. <clears throat> if you want to make it easy for Carl, you try to stand right in front of him and let him hit you. That's not the way to do it. Right? Understand who Carl Frotch is. Carl Frotch has never had great hand speed. So Frotch has developed a cagey style that compensates for his lack of hand speed. He spent his entire career fighting guys who were faster than him in the ring. And he's come up with ways to con them into walking into his punches. Right? Frotch is exactly the kind of fighter against whom you need an experienced trainer, an experienced voice in your corner to give you advice as the fight progresses and you're getting hit with concussive punches. Let's face it, you know, a lot of these fights are wars. You're not thinking clearly after getting hit in the head a few times. There are going to be times where you go to your corner and you're buzzed, right? You're not at your best. If someone were to hand you a test at that point, you might not come within 10% of where you'd be if you were completely lucid. Carl Frotch hits hard like that. He causes that dizziness, right? You need to know that you have a guy in your corner who's going to help you clear the air. 
who's going to see things that you might not see. You know, Marvin Hagler in interviews talks about how after the first three rounds of the Duran fight, he was completely confused. He came to his back to his corner and he asked his corner, how do I counter this? And they told him, faint before you throw the punch. That's what saved Marvin Hagler in that fight. Right? Roberto Duran was too much of an enigma. And even a world champion like Marvin Hagler, an elite fighter, a Hall of Famer, understood he needed a second opinion. Right? And Hagler today concedes that that advice that he got from the corner won him the fight. Now, all I'm saying is given that George Groves is not in his 30s, like Floyd Mayweather, given that George Groves is in his mid-20s, he's a young guy, doesn't have the wealth of experience that some of these old guys who have changed trainers have had. Right? And given that Groves has been tempted, in fact lured, into shootouts in the past, I just have a hard time believing that he would change trainers this close to the Carl Frotch fight. You know, when you're dealing with talented people, <clears throat> there are going to be creative differences. There are going to be those moments where you know, you don't quite see eye to eye. But there's a greater good in the background. Right? Adam Booth, world-class trainer who trains David Hay, for example. Right? And has been with Hay for a long time. When I think of David Hay, I think of David Hay's team. And Adam Booth is a key part of that team. Right? Adam Booth is a guy who wants George Groves to be the super middleweight champion. Right? Booth helped lead David Hay to the heavyweight championship. He's been on the big stage. He's a cool head in the corner. He's not going to panic. Right? You know the relationship that you have with Adam Booth if you're a David Hay or a George Groves. Now, George Groves can go out there and he can get a great trainer. He can find a great substitute for Adam Booth. The problem is it takes time to mesh, right? You know, you know your wife. You don't know a new woman who might be a great person, but who hasn't been through the trials and tribulations with you. This is too short a time. The fight is a scant two months from now. This is too short a time for George Groves to go out and interview and find a trainer with whom he has the chemistry, with whom he has the background that he has right now with Adam Booth. I still think he has a chance to win the fight if he fights the right fight. But let's just say my money's staying in my pocket. I'm retracting my prior video, which was made under the impression that George Groves wasn't going to wait a few weeks before his fight to change his trainer, right? Also, I am a person <clears throat> who, when I think of fighters, right, uh, Timothy Bradley, I think of Joel Diaz. Uh, Juan Manuel Marquez, I think of Nacho Beristain, Vladimir Klitschko, I used to think of Emmanuel Stewart. Now that Klitschko is well into his 30s and had been with Stewart for several years before Stewart's recent passing, you know, I know Emmanuel Stewart's spirit is still in Vladimir Klitschko's corner. Right? When I think of Manny Pacquiao, I think of Freddie Roach. Things change, and I mean they change big time. When suddenly you're hearing that 
The guy is there. <clears throat> the fighter's still in the corner. But his corner men are not. Right? That's always a reason for pause. You need to be hesitant, even if you like the fighter. When a fighter is changing his corner this close to a fight. To the gamblers, I say investigate this George Groves story. Find out who George Groves is going to have in his corner. If it's not some guy who has been part of the team for a long period of time. For example, Bernard Hopkins' trainer was Bowie Fisher. Bowie Fisher's second in command was Nassim Richardson. When Bowie Fisher had health problems, Nassim Richardson was able to step in and have the transition be pretty seamless. Right, right now, Emmanuel Stewart disciple Jonathan Banks is leading the charge in Vladimir Klitschko's corner. In other words, the vision's the same. So unless it's some second who's part of Adams Booth's team, and unless it's a situation where Groves is still training in the same facilities near Booth, but Booth, for whatever reason, isn't in the corner, okay, maybe, maybe that would fly. But if you're hearing that Booth is with someone new, and it could be a heavyweight in the profession, Teddy Atlas, uh, Robert Garcia, right? It could be a great trainer, one of these trainer of the year alumni guys, right? No matter who it is, just understand that that new trainer means not only a new voice in the corner, but new training facilities, a lack of familiarity, Right? A different approach to sparring, different game entirely before the biggest fight of George Groves' life. I don't like the change. This close to the fight. So I'll be watching this fight because it is an excellent fight between two talented guys. <clears throat> and while I think that Groves is the more talented guy, I'm not going to pick him in the fight. I'm going to keep my hands in my pockets on this one because he's changing his team too close to the fight. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.